All right, here we are, Chichen Itza. This is the Daniel explanation. All right, here we are in Chichen. Chichen Itza basically means the, the well or the mouth of the well of the Itza. The left side of the pyramid is unrestored, so you can see the rubble, you can see what it looks like underneath the facade. And again, this was really discovered uh, for, by Westerners, by, by you know, Americans or, or, or Europeans. Uh, in 1839 or 1838 by Stevens and Catherwood, which is a big basically mountain of bush and trees. And so the restoration work you see happened in the 20th century to restore it and put it back together. Hmm. And this is the place where on the, a couple of equinoxes the sun hits it just so that, that the, the, it, it casts a light along the edges and it looks like there is a serpent undulating down towards the serpent head at the bottom. Oh, that's cool. uh, some people say that's only a result of the modern restoration that didn't do that anciently. So you got two different points of view on that. So what we see in Chichen Itza was during the Mayan classic period, so 600, 700, 800 AD. Uh, this temple is interesting because it has, uh, gosh, remember now, 91 steps each side. So if you multiply that by four, you get, for one for each side, you get 364. The temple at the top makes another one. So you have 365, which stand for the days of the year. The uh, terraces that go up also correspond to Mayan months. Now, at the very top is the Temple of Kukulkan, or Quetzalcoatl. And for the Maya, they actually believed that the temples represented mountains, and, or excuse me, the, the pyramids represented mountains. So the temple was put at the top of the mountain. You see at the very base, you see the plumed serpent, the serpent head, and you see the tongues coming out, which is the symbol of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. And at the top is the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, uh, I've been in there, which is kind of dark and dank and smelly now, but um, there are depictions of Quetzalcoatl uh, and carvings in the rock all around there, and there are still traces of the paint that we used to paint them. And there is one image that shows a bearded Quetzalcoatl with a long beard that goes way down to here. The beards are very unusual because none of the native peoples that you see today have beards. So, uh, something else. But what's also interesting is if we look around Chichen Itza, we'll see a lot of what are called Toltec features, which um, uh, date to central Mexico. And some people think that this was because of an invasion. The Toltecs came and invaded and conquered the Maya here. And now people are thinking that it wasn't an invasion at all, but which rather there were connections, cultural and economic ties between the Maya in Yucatan and the Toltecs who were in central Mexico. Very good, Professor. What's called the Temple of the Warriors, there is the Chakmol straight up the steps into the middle. The Chakmol was the messenger to the gods. You're talking about that little sacrificial thing right Yeah, he, what, what's happened is the figure is on his back with his knees up on the left and his Still head up on the right. And when people were sacrificed, their hearts were cut open and placed into the Chakmol. And the Chakmol was the messenger that took it to the gods. I've read that the bodies were then tossed down the steps. Whether that's true or not, uh, I, I don't know. So, this is the, the Temple of the Warriors, very important place for, for sacrificing, was up there. And the Maya looked at sacrifice as being uh, an important part of life. Uh, and just in order to, to get everything to go well, rain, crops, everything. And who was sacrificed? Uh, sometimes it was people caught um, in, in, in war. And uh, other times it could have been uh, their own people. I have seen some shows that suggest people considered it an honor to be sacrificed for, for the good of their people. Um, so, uh, this, the idea of a human sacrifice, uh, it's at one point in time, it, it goes all over Mexico. Even the Aztecs in central Mexico did it. And I've also read that the, um, the uh, uh, Temple of the Warriors right here functioned as a meeting for the ruling council up there. So that could have been where they, they met as well. And what's interesting, ancient references to Chichen Itza call it Ukyabnal, Ukyabnal, which means seven great rulers. So there's the idea that it was ruled by a council of, of seven. And you actually find that uh, number over and over again in Legends of Mexico, that they came from seven brothers, or there were seven original tribes that came, and people descended from them. Now here's the first thing that you're, that you're going to see, and you'll see uh, many more examples of this. Off to the left of that top building, you see little hook things hanging out. Oh, yeah. That's the nose of the god Chak. Chak is the god of rain for the Maya. And um, he has a long nose. 
oddly enough, very much like an elephant's trunk. And you'll see that all over uh, as we look at these ruins and other ruins as well. But these, these figures on the left and right, they are um, uh, a, a monster's mouth with a person in the middle. And I know uh, in at least one Mayan site, the monster's mouth represents Shibalba, the Mayan underworld. And the person in the middle represents uh, Quetzalcoatl, who descended to the underworld and then rose triumphantly afterwards. So he's rising out of the mouth of the underworld. So this is the back end of the yes. warrior temple. Yes, the temple of the like warriors. Unrestored. Mm -hmm. Unrestored. You can see the top of the temple right there. However, you do find things like this, very accurate, perfectly drawn wheels, or circles. Sometimes I think they're called a solar disc. Going yeah. straight up, and then there again we have, the, we have chalk, the noses of chalk sticking out. There's a large one right in the corner, that wheel, sort of spoked wheel look right over there as well. Oh yeah, there. So, we're seeing a lot in this one area. This is the final finish of the paint, probably, That's right. everything? This is the stucco. And this is the paint, very dark red color, over the stucco. And you can see how very smooth it was. And that's really what these things would have looked like. Just a very smooth, polished, uh, colorful look to them. Hmm. Very different from how we would imagine them just by seeing them. It's a pierced nose plug. It goes through. There's a warrior, good shot of him. Seems like he's got like a helmet on. Yeah, yeah it's a headdress. Probably a feathered headdress. The headdress actually goes all the way to here and up to there. That's the headdress right there. What's this thing under your hand? I can't, I can't tell. The, the, their art is very, like very a shield. symbolic. Look at this one. Here's a guy holding a staff. This is, this is very nice. Here are the feet. You can see the sandals that they wore. There are the sandals right there. There are the legs. Again, very Egyptian in the style. The feet are apart always, very Egyptian. And you see the staff going up, being held by the hand. This is uh, his clothing right there. Uh, there's part of the headdress. Right, and uh, again, there's one of those other spoked circular discs. I'm not sure if that stone actually belongs there, but uh, you can still see it. Huh. Pretty cool. Look at this dude. Oh wow. Another. There's some good ones here. Check that guy out. Oh yeah. That's he awesome. Older. Yeah, see, they're, they're all on a base, on a pedestal. You can see that. So the first stone shows the pedestal, the next stone shows the feet. You even get a very good view of his sandals, his sandals and the decorations by them. Wow, this, this is some good stuff here. It really is.